Hello, this is my second video about the uh, subject of audio music production. The first one uh, was about my particular audio and MIDI setup. You can find the link down below in the description and watch it if you haven't. And I would like just to mention that uh, I would like to create podcasts about audio, MIDI, music production by bi bi-weekly maybe. Let's see how it's gonna work and I would like to promise to deliver content which you couldn't find on the other channel or uh, even in a music school. I've been involved in music production for a while. Uh, please check uh, redmastering.co.uk or Google Red Mastering Studio London and you can find my uh, credits there. And please be welcome to this video. Okay, in today's video I'm gonna talk about very interesting solution so well this is just example of course this is not even plugged to the power but let's say this is output of the instrument line level coming into the input of the audio interface right it's very easy to record the input of it uh, via digital audio workstation and a solution but let's say that we don't want to use digital audio workstation and we want to record output of this signal coming out from this interface. Whatever application you use, maybe it is native instrument machine or maybe it is another standalone application, not digital audio workstation. The application which doesn't allow you to record outputs, let's say machine doesn't allow you to do that right in the real time. You can't do that. So today I would like to uh, show you the application which allows you not only record the outputs, several outputs. Let's say we want to record the, the outputs, the outputs from, from the output signal coming out from this interface. And uh, well, the, the, the simplest solution would be to plug the, the output, uh, the cable into another interface input another computer or digital audio workstation and then record it, especially if you would like to have it recorded on a separate tracks. That's the easiest solution. But what, uh, what if we don't have a computer, if we don't have additional interface and also if you would like to avoid additional analog to digital conversion, which happen here, you know, this is input converted from analog to digital and then from digital to analog here and then to record it to another uh, to an, a digital audio workstation there's another conversion for interface so how to do that without this conversion without additional audio interface on computer just on the one computer internally that's that's the subject of today's video i'm going to explain it and show you example how it's done on my particular setup so please uh, please watch the video so that's the first part of the, the video and main part. I also talk about happy accidents in the music and uh, especially relating to recording those happy accidents and being able to record those happy accidents uh, multi-tracking, right? So uh, in the middle of the video, it's a little bit talking about happy accidents, how I record the last performance and there is also five minute performance using the discuss setup and a few final words after watching uh, my video recording editing i'm sorry it is very rough i'm not very skilled with video editing but the content is important the information and knowledge pass is important also audio quality is very good and video quality is not bad either anyway uh, one important thing uh, I presume people would say why you don't put machine inside digital audio workstation and then record uh, through digital audio workstation well the answer is very simple once I do it the machine is not machine anymore because machine as a standalone is like an instrument right it's very much like Akai MPC the old one from you know 90s 3000 2000 etc but it is instrument. You don't touch the mouse, you don't touch the, the keyboard, you actually have fun uh, touching the instrument, the knobs, the pads. 
So for me, it's very important. Once uh, the machine uh, uh, exists as a plugin inside the digital audio workstation, all the inputs, outputs, all the routing, everything's gone. So I don't want to use machine in this way. And it's very important to use for me and explain it in this video how to use machine as a standalone. Therefore, audio interface you use <laughs> is already occupied by machine. So the only way to multi-track it professionally, and that's the best way to do it really, is another computer, another audio interface, digital audio workstation, and then multi-track it separately via every single analog output. But uh, today video I explain how to do it without extra cables, without extra money, extra computer, extra audio interface. One of the reasons uh, I made this video is, first, there is no video like that on a YouTube. I tried to find information and I couldn't. So this is the first one explaining, not Azure Link Pro, but using machine and Azure Link Pro in this particular setup. The very important thing is this video is not just for people who use or own a uh, machine. The, that software, that application, Azure Link Pro, allows you to route uh, internal signal from different places to different places. And as just a very good example, if you would like to, for example, use OBS for streaming and uh, uh, send some buses from, uh, from the machine internally, digitally into the OBS, it is possible to do it, you know. You can route inside, ins and outs, however you wish. So that's uh, that's very cool thing. Also, it's a little bit overwhelming because there's a lot of ins, lots of outs. So please take your time learning how the application works. But this is a really, really, really cool, cool, <laughs> cool uh, software. I wanted to mention another thing is a lot of people ask me about the crispness and quality of of recording at Zoom. And uh, well, this is the answer, you know. I use very basic, very budget uh, equipment, I would say. Behringer audio interface, Behringer instrument, Roland instrument, but those from the, I don't know, uh, you could say the low shelf, but you know, inexpensive. Well, Juno was 400 euros, but Roland TR8 was 250, but doesn't matter, you know. I use cheap equipment and I achieve very quality results. And one of the reasons is, is actually that, you know, uh, being able to multi-track everything and then eventually if something's wrong, correct it. So this is also the reason for, for that video. When making music and recording is a stereo master is very easy to be done. Yeah, there is no task, not challenge. But it's a completely different story with multi-tracking. So let's say you perf perform, you play instruments, several instruments, and you would like to have it recorded, bass separately, drums separate every single instrument on a single track, so it will allow you later on to mix it or maybe even just balance it well. In my case, when I make music, this is very crucial, and I will explain in this video later on why, it is ex uh, why this is uh, very important for me, and... Um, and yes, but now I wanted to show you, uh, I would say, audio engineering trick with some very quirky application, which is a freeware application, by the way, very handy. This is kind of like, um, the software is called uh, Azure Link Pro, and this is uh, freeware. You can download it for free. It is quite difficult and overwhelming on the first view, but uh, I will drop you the link to the geezer who uh, have a YouTube channel explaining all the ins and outs of the software. Also, he created manual himself, so the link to this person is down below. And the software in a very basic is uh, like a patch bay, but internal and digital, of course. So you can patch, different signals within your computer, inside your computer, ins and outs, to record it or to send it to different places. One of the reasons people use this software is that you can uh, use it with uh, video streaming software like OBS or Discord, whatever you can. And of course, you can send several different buses of your work or your instruments to different places, everything digitally inside. So that's like, uh, 
very important tool, I would say, especially if you don't have, uh, uh, you know, a lot of money to get another computer with another interface. If you want to multi-track 15, 20 tracks, you need a proper interface. And it's going to be very tricky to do it on the one computer to play music and then record it. So perfect situation is if you have a separate system for uh, for the recording. I used to have that system, but now in temporary situations, sort of like holidays, I have only laptop. But my last two performances or three of them uh, were done, were recorded just a master studio. For this particular reason, I didn't. I don't have a computer, and I don't. I'm not able to multi-track it. But then, the last performance, I really like it. What I heard on coming out from my speakers. But then, when I recorded it, it was a lot of issues anyway. And because I plug another audio interface, and then I uh, have another digital audio workstation just for catching the sound. And there were some crackles because I wanted to do it via SPDF out in. So there were crackles, dropouts, a lot of issues. Finally, with Asia for All uh, software for uh, Asia drivers, probably everybody heard about that. I managed to stabilize the situation, but still I was not happy about recording just the master because you know the performance was cool, but I've lost uh, the balance was wrong. So uh, the final mix, which is on YouTube, doesn't sound like the song I intended to have. Okay, so I decided to get back to this software, Asia Link Pro, which I uh, had the pleasure to use for a while, over a year ago. And now I thought, well, it could help me out. And then here it is. Uh, I will show you how it works with my particular setup. Of course, your setup could be different. So again, the link to the person who explains all the ins outs and also prepared a very detailed manual is down in the description. There's a guy I've learned from. I'm still... So what I wanted to say is that the GUI of the software is kind of like uh, funky, uh, not very, uh, <laughs> very human friendly, I would say, but the software is amazing. And here you can see the, the panel. So the entire idea is to, you can see the machine, machine outputs here, right? I know it's not perfect, but this is a temporary situation in the garden. I have my instrument set up outside in the garden, so we have a little sun issue. Uh, but still, you know, uh, it is a really beautiful day and a very cool place to, to record it. Anyway, so this is the software, and uh, I run it on Asia for All. I presume everybody, most of the people heard about Asia for All. And I'm not gonna go into details about Asia for All, but Asia for All are very handy, I would say, if you're on a Windows and you would like to use several interfaces at the same time, because normally uh, there is no way to use uh, uh, several, in I mean, different audio interfaces within your DAW. No DAW will allow it because uh, the drivers are. If you, change, if you set up the drivers for a particular interface, uh, the other one won't, won't work. But with Asia for All, it is very cool that you can actually chain those interfaces and use them together. But anyway, this software, Asia Pro, Asia Link Pro, it is an internal routing software. And uh, here we have uh, actually. Okay, so uh, this is the panel of the software. Um, uh, again, I would just give the very basic idea about how it works. Uh, because this is 
this is not a place for me to explain it besides I'm still learning this software so I'm not a guru guy about explaining but in general you have uh, inputs and outputs for your interface but also there's an option for a looper and that's something which is very important and will change it changed my workflow because looper it is kind of like a patch base so you can send outputs from your virtual outputs from your interface into the looper and then from the looper you can route it to hundreds of different places and instances mono or stereo and you can it's actually very cool you can also change the gain but anyway uh, for me this is very important because i will show you in a second how i connect it with a digital audio workstation so this uh, those drivers azure link pro work like uh, you choose in your uh, interface or your digital audio workstation those drivers and they manage everything so every um, uh, instance of every audio software if you choose those drivers uh, the application will be able to co communicate and if the software is asia based then you can use asia in asia out but if you use a software which is not asia based let's say you want to record uh, directly uh, some uh, youtube uh, i don't know uh, program you want uh, you want uh, you want to record the, the the editor whatever speaker and instead of plugging different cables ins and outs recording it through analog you just use this software and actually patch the the output from one place to input to another place and you can record it with your DAW or whatever that thing is super super handy again it is very tricky in the beginning to set it up and I don't know if you can hear that there's a hundred of different <laughs> cables coming in and out and it took me a while more than uh, 24 hours to to manage everything because unfortunately all the inputs and outputs of your interface has different names and uh, input one is not necessary one it could be input four or seven so you have to experiment but when you set it up i will show you how it works and now uh, now let's uh, let's play some music and first we 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 stay on this uh, machine page so you will see how the the routing goes it is very simple all my instruments let me switch another camera So uh, all my instruments are output. I'm not talking about media this is moment, but audio. Everything goes into the interface, the input, which is connected to the machine. Unfortunately, machine has only four zero inputs, so maximum input is eight, and that's what I utilize. And this is very important because the interface I will show you in a second works as a mixer also patch bay mixer very handy so let's start with music and uh, you will see what's happening on the screen so for example uh, channel one uh, those two channels you can see this is uh, coming on from from uh, roland drum machine so yeah well kick And you can see this is routed like, uh, well, this is drum machine, okay? Drum machine uh, goes to the two channels, which is routed to, I will show in a second, to digital audio workstation, but now we are sticking in the machine, within the machine. So, uh, let me show you the trick now. Okay, so, well, probably you cannot see that very well, but that's just not important. Like I said, uh, I'm not a 
the intent of this video is not to explain how the, the software works because someone else can explain it much better. I just want to show how it could be utilized in a situation like this. And you can you can see on the on the left hand side. Uh, you can see on the left hand side. This is when my drums coming in, right? Voila. But what about other instruments? This is electron, right? So here I have a separate input for electron. That's how it was rooted within this software, Asia Link Pro, via loop in and loop out. So my system allows me to separately monitor everything via machine as I used to with very little latency and, and it crackles. And then Asia Link Pro allows me to root every single uh, input from my interface internally, digitally into the DAW, back into the DAW via separate tracks. So as you can as you can see on the screen, this is another uh, instrument. And then let's bring let's bring Juno. <laughs> well, here is Juno, right? On a separate channel. And here also you can see I call it FX because I also record separately uh, all the FXs. So uh, delay and reverb, right? You can hear, you can see here. Actually, there is no uh, maximal amount of routing you can do. So you can add. I mean, there's of of course uh, input, physical input of your interface. You cannot change that. If you have ten or or twelve, you cannot make fifteen out of it. But once it's inside or whatever is inside of a computer, you can route it in 100 different places. So that's the beauty of the thing. And from the machine, I can route several things. So uh, here we go. This is uh, my 303. Right? This is 303 on a separate channel. And this is MOOC here. Maybe too loud, but that, there it goes. Free, MOOC, there we go, kick, There we go, there's a kick. So, uh, voila. And then, sorry for the wind. <laughs> And then I also have another input, which is uh, another input, oh, sorry, another output from, from machine, which I use for uh, additional loops or samples. I have a, a one group for, for, for that. I don't use it a lot, but sometimes I catch something from a synthesizer, I want to use it, and I want to record it also on a separate track for the further, uh, you know, mixing. And you can see, actually, this is from my last night recording. I need just a little tiny movement of fader and I'm very happy with the mix. It's not like I have to open the project and change EQ, dynamics, no, no, no. For me, important is to have it on a separate tracks and that makes a big difference because um, uh, then I can just use the, the little thing, you know, little massaging, I would say, but... Uh, uh, let's play music for a while.
<laughs> now let's get back. It was a technical thing. And if you have any questions, uh, please ask me in the comments. I will be happy to answer. Uh, now I want to talk about Happy Accident because it's also very important. The previous song, which is I called uh, Sailing Through the Ocean of the Tears, very nice name. It was completely accident. I uh, recorded everything, not being aware of it, it is recorded. Because actually I was experimenting with this software and there were some hiccups. And I still have some hiccups, you know, sometimes uh, something happened, I don't know what and why. So I'm still testing that. But uh, during a testing, you know, I actually program baseline, like tick, 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 something, you know, uh, without even thinking and program some drums whatever just to be able to see if the signal is coming in how to monitor that how to record it you know every single instrument one by one it took me a while but uh, and then at some point i press start button on the uh, drum machine and then it was quite interesting i quite like it what it came out i mean especially bass line with the kick drum was very cool So uh, I decided. To, so I decided to just play, you know, not even in, without intention to record. I was still looking at the screen if it's recorded or no, because like I said, there were some hiccups, and during recording, sometimes it stopped the recording. The application didn't restart or didn't do any terrible, you know, uh, crackles or whatever. It just restarts softly. I would say, just stop working. Audio is not coming in, and for a second, it's back. So. Why this is happening, I don't know, but during that, that testing, actually, I started playing. And it was a lovely night, very quiet, and uh, I kind of enjoyed what I was doing. And then I look at the screen and I see it is recorded. <laughs> so uh, it was over one hour. And funny thing is, when, uh, when I opened that session later in the, in the door, to see the recordings, the mix was was really good quality, and just touch a little bit to the levels, and it was done. But the whole point of this video about happy accident is this: a happy accident happened, <laughs> and there is not something you you consider. And the important thing is to record it, the happy accident, because if you don't, it's gone. <laughs> So, and uh, having ability to multi-track happy accidents is the best because within happy accidents there's some very cool things and some things which maybe are not super cool on the other instrument and then having recorded it on a separate tracks makes a big difference because you keep the interesting things and remove uh, the rubbish. But anyway, there was a happy accident, it was very cool, it was my first multi-track recording in this very space like with very <laughs> limited uh, equipment i have but still allowing me to to record it on a separate tracks which i'm very happy and that session just a few minutes ago was also multi-tracked and you will be able to hear the music uh, <laughs> for, uh, not through the speaker through the microphone of the mobile phone so okay i was thinking maybe explain uh, quickly how my my system works maybe it could be interest of someone but not in the deep details just just roughly because uh, there is another video explaining how i have everything connected i believe my system is unusual in some way i would say because uh, i use machine in a completely different way than most people would use it for me, it is just a box, which is uh, serving as a sequencer for for Juno, uh, for uh, Model D sometimes. But most importantly, it is audio mixer, and and I utilize VST plugins. I use a lot of reverbs and, and delays, 
and you probably can hear the dealers and rivers uh, utilize a lot so vst technology is something i'm you know kind of like quintans with very well since uh, beginning of year 2000 uh, even before that's that's uh, why i like machine okay so there is a video explaining uh, with details how my system works by basically all instruments all synthesizers drum machines are connected to Behringer interface and then finally uh, to the machine software but the very important is I work with machine as a standalone not inside the door because inside the door is not machine anymore it's just a plug-in and loses all the capabilities as a, a center of uh, you know touching things machine is uh, it's very much like MPC and it's cool because you don't touch the mouse or keyboard but in my case I use machine to mix all the signals and this is a MIDI controller which uh, for me oh, let me show you okay okay so um, well I programmed that uh, so I have this is like a mixer and I have Roland TR8 here, and there's a Juno, and there's a Model D, and 303. And I have another controller, and I have a Electron here, and uh, FX, return from FX, some knobs uh, assigned to reverb and delay, and this is uh, solo for <laughs> replica and uh, saturation plugin but this gives me ability to not spend thousands of thousands of dollars because this is kind of like a dowless setup i don't have a dough until i record something then i need to have a dough but as long as i play music i don't need a dough machine serves me as a standalone yes i need a computer laptop yes of course but still i prefer this option over spending few thousand dollars for a very expensive reverb very expensive delays you if you want to have a quality reverb or quality delay even tight or if, i mean there's a lot of companies you have to be prepared to spend thousand or fifteen hundred dollars per one box and you need one reverb quality one delay and probably something else some distortion and that's a lot of money a lot of cables and a lot of issues how to you would need another mixer Mm, external mixer right so more cables and uh, I decided that uh, I realized machine is very stable I have no issues performing there were some issues in the beginning but it was it is solved and now my system is super stable and I have it uh, set up in a very smart way I would say for example this is this is Roland drum machine and uh, so this is the output of the Roland but uh, this is not the same this fader is actually output of the machine and after the reverb you can hear that but also I have a I have a compressor and a limiter set up this very smart way let's say So this is a threshold of compressor and this is the output of compressor and after compressor have a setup limiter so the signal is coming out of the machine is not the same like coming in because this is compressed and limited and this is also very important because a lot of people I've noticed complaining people who play music live not the DJs but play music live from instruments they complain about the not dynamics because dynamics is better than dj said but the loudness of course uh, playing music like this without compression limiting you will be always uh, less loud than the dj before you and after you because they use compressed music and blah 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 but with my setup i have a compressor on every single instrument a limiter on drums only and i program all the knobs and um, midi controllers so i have access to that you know so for example let's see the delay now this is delay here return of the delay but i can control the delay here
this is replica actually uh, this is just example but but the idea is to have a system which is uh, very easy to control and uh, light uh, to 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 move from one place to another because sooner or later i would like to play music live but anyway so uh, uh, quickly all the instruments goes into the interface and uh, goes to the machine and the challenge for me was to to multi-track and then I explained it in the previous um, in uh, you know 10 minutes earlier how I use Azure Link Pro okay so this is this is it and uh, thank you very much for watching that and this is just uh, me saying goodbye thank you for for uh, being with us if you have any questions or um, any inquiries please ask in uh, in the comments i'll be very happy to answer and also don't forget to subscribe uh, to our channel we're gonna deliver uh, more videos like that and i can promise you that we're gonna work out on the video editing issue and others take care